in this video, we're going to talk about the median of a triangle. So what exactly is a median? It's a line segment drawn from any vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's draw a picture to illustrate this. And let's call this triangle ABC. Every triangle contains three medians because there are three vertex in every triangle. So the first median, we're going to draw it from vertex A to side BC. Now, a median will cause the opposite side to be congruent. Both sides, it's going to, the median is basically a segment bisector. It bisects BC into two congruent parts, which means that this point, let's call it point E. Point E is the midpoint of BC. Now the second median we're going to draw is from vertex B to side AC. And so the median is going to bisect side AC into two congruent parts. And let's call that the midpoint point F. So F is the midpoint of AC. So the median always touches the midpoint of the side that's opposite to the vertex. And then the third median, we're going to draw it from vertex C to side AB. And that was in a straight line. Let's do that again. And so it's going to bisect AB into two congruent parts. And let's call this point D. So D is the midpoint of AB. Now notice that the three medians of this triangle intersect at a point. Now my graph is not perfect, but if you draw the lines perfectly, they will line up directly at, they're going to intersect at one point. Whenever you have lines intersecting at a point, you could say those lines are concurrent. So the three medians are concurrent and they meet up at a point called the centroid, which is basically the center of gravity of the object. So let's say if you had a triangle that's made up of uh, a metal with a uniform density. If you throw it, the object is going to spin around a centroid. You could think of it as the center of mass if its mass is distributed uniformly throughout the object. Now, another thing you need to know is that each median divides the triangle into two smaller triangles with the same area. So for example, let's consider triangle ABC. And I'm going to draw the median from A to BC. And let's call this point D. So triangle ABD has the same area as triangle ACD. So the area of the top side is the same as the area of the bottom side. So that's another property of medians. You could see it this way if we draw the median from B. So let's say this is A, B, and C. So let's draw the median right in the middle. So these two parts are congruent. Let's call this D. And now you can see that the area of the triangle on the left is congruent or equal to the area of the triangle on the right. Now there's something else that you need to know about medians. So I'm going to draw the three medians. So this is going to be E and F. Now, if AE is equal to, let's say, 9, and let's call the center point, point P. If AE is equal to 9, what is the length of AP and PE? So here's AE, that's equal to 9. This side, the distance between 
the vertex and the centroid is going to be two-thirds of the median and AE is the median that we're considering. So it's basically two-thirds of nine. Nine divided by three is three, three times two is six. So AP is six units long. And then PE, that's going to be one-third of the median and the median is nine, so it's three. So notice that the distance between the vertex and the centroid is always going to be twice the value of the distance between the centroid and the midpoint. So A is the vertex, E is the midpoint, and P is the centroid. So therefore we could say that CP is twice the value of FP. Now let's say if PD is 4. What is the value of BP and BD? So I'm going to put this in yellow. So PD is 4. That's the distance between the midpoint and the centroid. Now the distance between the vertex and the centroid is going to be twice the value. So it's 8. Now the median is going to be the sum of these two values. That's BD, which is PD plus BP, so that's going to be 12. Now let's look at another example. So consider triangle ABC. And let's say that BD is the median, where D is the midpoint, which bisects AD and it bisects AC into two parts, AD and DC. And let's say that point P is the centroid. Now, if BP is equal to 10x minus 4, and PD is equal to 3x plus 2, then what is the length of the median BD? So go ahead and figure this out. Now BD is basically the sum of PD and BP. So if we could find these two values individually, then we can easily find the median. In order to find the value of x, we need to find a relationship between BP and PD. So remember, if PD is equal to, let's say y, but let's not use x because we already have x here. If PD is y, then BP is 2y. BP, the distance between the vertex and the centroid, is twice the length of the distance between the centroid and the median. I mean, not the median, but the midpoint. So therefore, we can say that BP is two times the value of PD. So once we can write this equation, now we can replace BP with 10x minus 4 and PD with 3x plus 2. So now let's distribute the two. So 2 times 3x is 6x, 2 times 2 is 4. Now I'm going to subtract both sides by 6x, and I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So we can cancel the 4s on the left and 6x on the right. 10x minus 6x is 4x, 4 plus 4 is 8, and 8 divided by 4 is 2, so x is equal to 2. So now that we have the value of x, we could find BP and PD. So BP is going to be 10 times 2 minus 4. 10 times 2 is 20, 20 minus 4 is 16. Now to find PD, which should be half of BP, so PD should be 8, it's going to be 3 times 2 plus 2. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8. 
So now we could find the value of BD. It's going to be BP, which is 16, plus PD, which is 8. So therefore, the length of the median is 24 units long. And that's the answer. So let's review some generic equations that you need to remember. Let's say this is A, B, C. We're going to use the same picture. And let's call this D. And let's say the centroid is at P. So BP is always going to be twice the value of PD based on this diagram. And BD is the median. So PD is always going to be one third of the median, one third of BD. And BP, the distance between the vertex and the centroid, that's going to be two thirds of the median. So if you understand these three equations, you can solve algebra problems that are associated with medians of a triangle. Now let's work on another algebra problem. Let's use the same shape just to keep everything the same. So we're going to say this is A, B, C. And this is going to be D. And once again, P is going to be the centroid. So let's say that PD, that's a terrible P. Let's say PD is equal to 4x minus 7. And that BD is equal to x squared plus 11. So with this information, find the length of BP. So feel free to pause the video if you want to. Now, what we need to do is we need to find x. If we could find x, then we could find PD. And once we have PD, BP, the distance between the vertex and the centroid, is simply twice the value of PD. However, in order to find x, we need to know the relationship between the median and the distance between the midpoint and the centroid. PD, that's the short side, it's going to be one third of the median. Remember, BD, the long side, is always two thirds of the median. Actually, wait, I meant to say BP. BP is the long side, that's two thirds of the median. So that's two thirds of BD, which we really don't need in this particular example. So let's focus on this equation. PD is 4x minus 7, and that's equal to 1 third of BD, which is x squared, plus 11. So 4x minus 7 is equal to, well, let's get rid of the fraction before we try to distribute the 1 third. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. On the right side, 1 third times 3 is just 1. So on the left side, I'm going to distribute the 3 to 4x minus 7. And that's going to be 12x minus 21, which is equal to x squared plus 11. Now at this point, we need to find the value of x. And what we have is a quadratic equation. So let's take everything from the left side and move it to the right side. So we need to subtract both sides by 12x. and let's add 21 to both sides. So on the left side, we now have 0. On the right side, we're going to have x squared minus 12x. And 11 plus 21 is 32. So now we need to factor the expression. So what two numbers multiply to 32 but add up to negative 12? This is going to be negative 4 and negative 8. Negative 4 times negative 8 is positive 32, but negative 4 plus negative 8 adds up to negative 12. So now that we have the value of x, well, not yet. We're close to it. So we can factor x squared minus 12x plus 32 as x minus 4 and x minus 8. So therefore, there's two possible x values 
x can be positive 4, or it can be positive 8. So let's start with positive 4. Let me just write this on the side. So when x is 4, pd is going to be 4 times 4 minus 7. So that's 16 minus 7, that's 9. So I'm going to write that in green. Now, bp has to be twice that value. It has to be 18. So that's the answer we're looking for, which is BP. That's one possible answer. And to make sure that it's correct, this has to equal 27. So BD is going to be 4 squared plus 11. 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 11 is 27. So we know that these answers make sense because 9 plus 18 is 27. Now what about when x is 8? Let's see if that answer works. So pd is going to be 4 times 8 minus 7. 4 times 8 is 32. 32 minus 7 is 25. So I'm going to put this in yellow. So pd is 25, which means that bp must be 50. And so BD, the median, has to be 75. So let's find BD using this equation. So it's going to be x squared, which is 8 squared plus 11. 8 squared is 64. 64 plus 11 is 75. So therefore, both answers work. There's two possibilities. So BP, which is what we're looking for, can either be 18 or 50. There's two possibilities. And so that's it for this video. So now you understand what exactly a meeting is, how it works, how to draw it, some properties associated with it, and also you know how to solve certain algebra problems with it.